what's up guys welcome back to the channel today we're going to be fixing something with the forerunner that actually hasn't really been bothering me um, i've driven the forerunner in its current condition for almost a year without thinking or without needing to have to change this so this is purely an upgrade if you have the extra cash to do so i think it's a pretty nice upgrade let's get into the car i'll show you what i'm talking about What we're upgrading today is this stock radio, the stock head unit. Um, I basically just have my regular Spotify play through this, which is fine. It's been playing through Bluetooth, no problems. I just mount my phone here for uh, navigation. I don't use this factory navigation, but you know, today we're but if you've been following with the channel, you would have seen that I've upgraded the stock head unit on the Evo 10. And wow, it's really a game changer. So we're gonna be doing a similar upgrade to the 4Runner, which is actually my daily driver. We're going to be upgrading the stock head unit with the Car Trim Home T10 unit. All right, so let's, let me get some of these some of my junk out of the way um, first things first we have to remove this trim and actually a lot of this trim on the car is supposedly fairly simple to take out all you have to do is pry on this okay there you go came out tabs are still intact basically doing the same with this side there you go tabs are still intact actually it says left so this part should be pretty simple you take these two bolts out it should just flip up the whole head unit should just flip up There's just a uh, one plug back here who can leave it connected if needed. Get some towels to make sure none of this stuff gets scratched up. You know what? I think it probably would be easier if I just detach this instead of having it hang here and risk damaging it. There you go. It's held on by two oh, a pin here. Now a tiny little clip over there, put it on the dash. And then to remove this stock head unit, it's four bolts, one, two, three, four. All right, now this head unit should just basically come out. I'm lifting from the bottom. There we go. It's actually pretty heavy. So I'm going to start disconnecting the pins from the back. It's really nothing to see, just disconnect all the pins. There we go, stock head unit is out. What we're going to do is we're actually going to bring this whole head unit inside because one, we need to transfer um, the hazard light switch over here and these vents. We're going to have to transfer these vents the hazard light switch onto the new radio. So let's go there and let's go inside. Let's get out of this heat and transfer all these wires over. All right guys, here's what we have in the box. We have the double din, some plugs, for the RCA cables that you're not going to be using, you can plug them up. Some panel removal tool, microphone, GPS antenna, Wi-Fi dongle. You have various USB ports here. You can have a double one where you can attach your Android Auto Apple CarPlay dongle if you want to use that. Um, this is a single USB. 
This is a SIM card and it has, um, let's see, your sub out and your microphone. This is for the rear camera. This is basically the main harness that connects to all your other harnesses. Uh, this is the antenna radio. If you guys purchased it from Car Trim Home, um, King Sev, if you want to check out his install video, has recommended that you put this screen on this foam block. Um, he has said so many times that the screen would crack. He said it so many times it scared me that my screen would crack. So I am doing it the exact same way and putting the screen on top of the styrofoam. Once we have that going, everything else is fairly simple. I am going to first work on all these plugs. Alright, so we're going to be removing the vents, this upper piece right here, and this little plastic screen plate right here. We take these two off, the hazard switch, and um, these vents, okay? You want to make sure the screws, the Phillips screwdriver that you pick correctly aligns with these screws because you really don't want to strip them. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're actually gonna remove this hazard button. Um, it's pretty simple. It's a little clip back here. There you go. This is just to help provide a little bit more clearance. So when we do take the vents out, it's a little bit of an easier task. We're also going to take these screws out on the side. And what you can do to gain clearance is to move the open and close vent switch and it can allow you access to either one of those screws. And now it's the tricky part to actually get these vents out. What you'll have to do is pop these tabs off and wiggle it out from the front. I got it. I will show you what exactly I did. So I put one of these pry tools here um, and it almost seems easier to work on one side. Make sure this pry tool is in there. There we go. And you wanna try to loosen one side first. The side that I first loosened was the inside. So it basically went that way. So hopefully to make this easier for you guys to see, I pried that and you see how this thing just came loose. And then you pry the two tabs on this side and the whole unit should come free. There we go. 
So now that we have everything out, um, we're going to put the stock head unit aside and we're going to get the aftermarket unit, the T10. We're going to start by placing this top piece in. Now we're putting in the vents. This is the right sided vent. And let's see if it snaps in the way the original one snapped in. Oh, make sure everything's working. Okay, now we've got the vents in. We're gonna put this hazard switch through. It's already looking so nice. Yes, I will be taking the plastic off. Um, and then we have these two pieces. Now that we have everything connected, hooked up, we're gonna go out to the car and make sure it all works. We're back. Okay. Lots of sweat, a lot of sweating later. I've got to bring these clips from the OEM unit over so they just pop on. The exterior ones are yellow, the interior ones are white. There's four exterior ones, two interior clips. Let's put all these clips in. Plug the battery in. Well, hopefully everything works. All right, we're just gonna soft test this. Tons of wiring. Tuck it all back in. Plug the battery in. It's looking pretty. Ooh, it's looking pretty sick already. Yeah. All right, guys. Everything has been installed. Everything is working. As you see, I have the Apple CarPlay, I have the stock radio working, everything's working. Um, this is the reverse. Reverse goes into the rear camera and the radio controls are working. Volume up, volume down, everything is working. And go back to the, the Apple CarPlay. We got Spotify, uh, all different music, top 100s, billboards, top 100. All the songs are here. Everything is working. Um, if you guys notice, there's also a diff another change in the vehicle. Um, I will quickly post a picture of what it looked like before.
Were you guys able to tell what else has changed? If you were not able to tell, I also changed the trim color of these two trim pieces right here. They were originally silver and now they're gloss black. I actually testing a kit out from Car Trim Home that that blacks out the whole vehicle. So I only did it to these pieces right now just because they were out. Um, let me know what you guys think. I'm probably gonna black out the whole vehicle, the whole interior of the vehicle. Um, yeah, man. And guys, this head unit is a huge upgrade from the stock head unit. Um, this definitely makes the car feel a lot more modern. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.